Good afternoon, friends. My name is Tony. I'm a member of Grace Fellowship Church in Davenport, Iowa. I'm here with brothers and sisters from my church and from another local church here. We've been sent out by our pastors, all of us, to bring to you the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news that your sins can be forgiven. The good news that you can be reconciled to the one and only true God each and every one of us know. The good news that you could have the assurance of eternal life, not on the basis of anything you have done to earn it or deserve it, but on the basis of God's grace and mercy that so ordained it if he does save you and made it possible through his son Jesus Christ. The good news, my dear friends, that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life and that no one comes to the Father but through Him. Many people believe that there are many roads to God and I agree with them. There are many roads to God. All but one lead to death. There's only one that leads to life. And that is Jesus Christ. We're here because we love you as our neighbors. We're here because we do not want to see anyone perish in their sin. We're here because there is only one lawgiver and judge. There is only one who is able to save and destroy, and that is God, the one and only God who is triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'd like to begin by reading from the Word of God, from James's letter found in the New Testament, beginning in chapter 4, verse 1. God's Word tells us this, What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the Scripture says he yearns jealously over the Spirit that he has made to dwell in us? But he gives more grace. Therefore it says God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. Do not speak evil against one another, brothers. The one who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is only one lawgiver and judge, he who is able to save and destroy. But who are you to judge your neighbor? God's Word. There's a name no one likely knew, very few people likely knew a week ago that Certainly everyone in this community now knows, many people around the world know this name now, the name of Daryl E. Brooks, the man who is presently in custody and awaiting trial for the murder of eight people and the injury of some 60 others. You do not need me to tell you what happened here a week ago. And if I were to ask you, what do you want to see happen to Daryl Brooks, 
Some of you might say, well, he deserves the death penalty. I would agree with you. Now, I'm not from Wisconsin. It seems as though all of his charges, the maximum penalty is life without the possibility of parole. And so if he is found guilty on the various charges, at least on the eight deaths that he caused, and those sentences are served consecutively, he will, in effect, be in jail for the rest of his life, eight consecutive life sentences. And some of us will say, well, justice will be served if that happens. Some of us will say, well, we think he should have received the death penalty, but our laws are such that he's going to be in jail for the rest of his life. We believe that justice will be served. So let's say that Daryl Brooks has his day in court. He will, because we do live in America and people do still receive their day in court. He receives his day in court. He is rightly and understandably found guilty on the various charges against him, and it is the day of sentencing. And maybe because you live here in the area, you are in the courthouse, or you're watching on TV, or you're watching on your computer, and you're watching the sentencing procedures take place, and you are expecting justice. Daryl is standing before the judge having been found guilty. God bless you, sir. Having been found guilty for the various charges, and the judge, whoever that judge might be, asks Daryl Brooks, what do you have to say for yourself? And Daryl stands before the judge and before the jury and before the crowded courtroom, and he says, Your Honor, I am guilty. I confess to my crimes. I'm guilty. I should have never driven that car through that parade. But you know what, Your Honor? I think you're a forgiving judge. I think you're a compassionate judge. And I think you ought to let me go. So the judge, whoever that might be, him or her, rubs his or her chin, thinks about it for a moment or two, and says, well, that sounds good to me. I am a forgiving judge. And you've asked me so nicely. You're free to go. Would you believe that justice was served? You would want that judge, be honest, you would want that judge stripped of his or her authority to never sit on the bench again. Daryl Brooks shouldn't simply be let go. The judge shouldn't turn a blind eye to his crimes. What about the lives he took? What about the lives that have been forever changed as a result of his wicked, vicious actions? And this judge is going to let him go? No way. So let's go through this scenario again. Daryl E. Brooks is now standing before the judge again. The judge asks him what he has to say for himself. And Daryl gives the same answer. I'm guilty. I admit I did it. I should have never have done it. But I think you're a forgiving judge. I think you ought to let me go. The judge looks at Mr. Brooks, shakes his head, and says, I cannot let you go. I have to follow the requirements of the law. Justice must be served. In fact, I am going to sentence you to death for the crimes that you committed. And unlike our judicial system today, for better or for worse, unlike our system today where Daryl Brooks would then be given 10 years of three hots and a cot on our dime, all the weights he could lift, all the food he could eat, all the education he can uh, get for himself while he goes through appeal after appeal after appeal, the judge orders him to be taken into the next room immediately, strapped to a gurney, have a needle driven into his arm and have him put to sleep like a stray dog as a just punishment for the crimes that he committed. 
And now, instead of screaming through the judge's head, you're standing and you're applauding the judge. Way to go, judge! Kill him! He deserves to die for the lives that he took. And you sit there and you watch as the deputies handcuff Daryl E. Brooks again, and they're about to whisk him away into the next room for the death sentence to be carried out. And you think it's over. And you're about to turn off the TV. But then, inexplicably to you, the judge stands up from behind his bench. He takes off those black robes of authority and he steps down from that bench. He walks over to Daryl E. Brooks. And he says, I rightly found you guilty for the crimes you committed. I rightly sentenced you to die, but I'm going to take your place. And the judge, who did not commit the crimes, allows himself to be handcuffed by his own deputies, escorted into the next room. He is strapped to a gurney meant for Daryl E. Brooks. He allows a needle to be driven into his arm meant for Daryl E. Brooks. And he is put to sleep like a stray dog for the crimes that Daryl E. Brooks committed. And Daryl E. Brooks is set free. Would you still be applauding the judge? Would you storm toward the court and try to take the law into your own hands and say, oh, no, 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 that, that judge, that judge should have never have died for that man. That is not fair. That's not right. There's no way that this man should be let go. We're going to make sure he pays for the crimes that he committed. Or would you stand there silently looking on in awe of the grace and mercy and love of that judge shown to a convicted felon, a convicted murderer who deserved no grace, who deserved no mercy, who deserved no love? Well, the picture I just painted for you has actually taken place. Not in the case of Daryl E. Brooks, but maybe in the case for you. I know it happened in my case. That judge died for me. That judge took upon himself the punishment I rightly deserve for my crimes. And who am I talking about? I am talking about Jesus Christ, the Lord. 2,000 years ago, God the Father sent his Son to earth in the person of Jesus Christ. Truly God and truly man and without sin. Born of a virgin just as the prophet Isaiah declared some 700 years before his birth. As God in the flesh, he lived a life of perfection in thought, word, and deed from cradle to grave, never once violating the law of his Father. Yet even though he knew no sin, and even though the Father, God the Father, gave judgment, all judgment to God the Son, at a time appointed by God the Father, before the foundation of the world, God the Son voluntarily submitted himself to the torturous, bloody death of a Roman cross. He died a death he did not deserve to take upon himself the punishment I rightly deserve for my sins against God. But unlike the judge in the story who never moved from that gurney, Jesus Christ, God the Son, was buried and then three days later he forever defeated sin and death when he rose from the grave. He is alive today and he will return at a time of the Father's choosing. And what God commands of you 
is the same thing he commands of me and all people everywhere, and that is that you repent, that you turn from your sin, and by faith and by faith alone, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. He will forgive your crimes. He will forgive your sin. He will forgive your lying and your thieving and your whoring and your hating and your adultering and your coveting. He will forgive your sin and he will remove it as far as the east is from the west and he will remember it no more and you will be reconciled to God not because you are innocent but because God is good and allowed his innocent son to shed his innocent blood for a guilty person like you like me and you will be clothed in the righteousness of Christ instead of the filthy garments of your unrighteousness, your sin. Many times over the years I have shared that courtroom analogy with people, placing them in the courtroom, not Daryl Lee Brooks, not some guy they've heard of and will never meet, but them. And when I tell them that the judge went into the other room to die the death that they deserve, they said, oh, no, 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 no. I did the crime. I'm going to do the time. No, I don't want anyone dying for me. Or well, my crime wasn't that bad. It doesn't warrant something like that. That's pride. That's pride. And pride comes before destruction. Destruction. And if you think you're going to stand before Almighty God and try to make a case to have Him forgive you without appealing to the shed blood of Jesus Christ, you're not going to be whisked into the next room to be put to sleep. You're going to be whisked into fire for all eternity as the wrath of God is poured out upon you forever and ever and ever as the just punishment for your sins against Him. And then if you think that no judge should do that for a man like Daryl E. Brooks, but ought to do that for someone like you, then you think more highly of yourself than you ought. And you presume upon the goodness of God that is somehow going to turn a blind eye to your sins you think are a lesser offense than the carnage that Daryl E. Brooks wrought upon this community last Sunday. But know this, if you've ever harbored bitterness or resentment in your heart, if you've ever har hated another human being, he is your father. If you've ever hated another human being, including Daryl E. Brooks, then God sees you as a murderer. And no murderer will enter into the kingdom of heaven. My friends, you need Christ. You need Christ. You don't need retribution. You don't need vengeance. You don't need Daryl E. Brooks to be put away for the rest of his life or to have his life ended for you to come to terms with what happened here last week or for you to be made right in some way with God in your own eyes. You need Christ. You need Christ. If you think that Daryl E. Brooks ought to go to hell for his crimes, but God should allow you to go for he to heaven while he ignores your crimes. You need Christ. You need Christ. And that's the message we've been bringing to you all day. Is to turn to Christ and live while God has given you time. There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads only to death. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through Him. Your only hope, my friends, 
Your only hope for forgiveness of sin is for you to turn from your sin and put your trust in Jesus Christ alone for your salvation. The cross, my friends, is where justice and mercy kissed. As God the Father poured out his justice and his wrath against his innocent son on behalf of guilty sinners like you and me. God the Father poured out that wrath against God the Son. And he did that on behalf of sinners like us. On behalf of sinners like you. So do not harden your hearts as so many do in these days of rebellion. Do not harden your hearts like maybe some in this community are doing today by saying, well, if God was good, if God was real, none of this would have happened last week. Do not harden your hearts. Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, and on the last day, he will exalt you. You will be exalted. You will be lifted up. You will be forgiven. You will be reconciled. Humble yourselves. There are no proud people in heaven. There are no proud people in heaven. There is not one person in heaven who thinks they're better than Daryl E. Brooks. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. My hope for Daryl E. Brooks is the same as my hope is for each and every one of you. That he will repent. That he will turn to Christ and live while God has given him time. That does not mean he escapes justice. That does not mean he escapes responsibility for his actions. That does not mean he escapes being in prison the rest of his life. But it does mean that if he turns to Christ, by God's grace, he will escape the wrath of God and receive the mercy and grace and love of God. I want that for Daryl Lee Brooks, and I want that for each of you just as much. Turn to Christ and live while God has given you time. And thank you for listening.